I was really just going to say, if there's another the Holocaust, if we, they start rounding up the Jews again, I hope Ben gets gassed first. Greens leader Adam Band has been left red-faced and his party in turmoil after he was forced to sack Senator Lydia Thorpe from his leadership team. Here's the obvious go-to. Biden doesn't listen to Elon Musk. The president of the United States does not have meetings with Elon Musk. Hmm. That is... Hey, here, come, 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 come get me. That's fucking retarded. Thanks for joining me here at Crossing the Line. I'm your host, Isaac King. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment down below. Now let's get into it. Hey, guys, thanks for joining me here on another episode of Crossing the Line. Gonna get into today's top story. As you can see, it's good news. Lydia Thorpe is out. She's gone. It's the last time. I hope, I pray, I really, really hope that is the last time we hear from her. Peter Dutton demands Green Senator Lydia Thorpe resigns over bikey relationship. The leader of the opposition party has come out swinging after it was revealed Green Senator Lydia Thorpe dated a bikey boss. Opposition, Peter, uh, opposition leader Peter Dutton has called for Green Senator Lydia Thorpe to resign over revelations she had undisclosed relationship with a former bikey boss. Miss Thorpe was a member of the Joint Parliamentary Law Enforcement Committee receiving confidential briefings about bikey gangs and organised crime. While she briefly dated Dean Martin, the ex-president of the Rebels Motorcycle Gang in 2021. Bit of a conflict of interest, don't you think? Uh, it's a bit ridiculous that she got put onto that committee in the first place. I don't know what they thought she was going to be able to contribute. But, um, yeah, it just goes to show you that everything everyone thought about her was correct. She is a lying, backstabbing, regular politician like the rest of them. Uh, now, Mr. Dutton has now accused Ms. Thorpe of receiving secret briefings about bikies during the day and sleeping with a bikie at night. I don't think Lydia Thorpe belongs in Parliament, Mr. Dutton told Sky News on Thursday night. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. You can't be in a position where you're receiving confidential secret briefings from the pl uh, police on bikies during the day and then you're sleeping with a bikie at night time. It just doesn't add up. It doesn't pass any pub test. The opposition leader called out Greens leader Adam Bant for a weak response and called him to demand her resignation from Parliament. Adam Bant is nothing but a weak response. The hypocrisy that we see from the Greens when they've been advocating for corruption commission and when you see that the double standards, you understand why they don't allow why they allow the sort of crazy people in their ranks that they have in recent years. It's correct there. They're just getting nuttier and nuttier by the day, by the looks of them. She should be locked up for the crap she pulled at that protest there, smearing fake blood all over a bloody parliament building or a, a, a public building, defacing public property. Uh, she should be leaving the Greens and she should be leaving the Australian parliament. She should be leaving the fucking country. Mr. Bant fronted reporters on Thursday night saying he had asked Ms. Thorpe's resignation as deputy leader of the party. At a minimum, Senator Thorpe needs to disclose to me her connection with Mr. Martin and her failure to do so shows a significant lack of judgment, Mr. Bant said. Mr. Dutton said the Federal Corruption Commission should investigate the matter immediately. Yes, they fucking should. They should be investigating a lot of his, but yes, definitely. What did she... What information did she deem from the police that she bled to the rebels no, not even mad at the bikies There's, I reckon we treat or well, the Australian government's treated bikies pretty disgustingly you know like get them for the illegal things that they do but when they're um, peacefully doing their thing in private they shouldn't be harassed if they're doing something illegal yeah fair enough but being a bikie shouldn't just um you know, put a crosshair on your back like that is. You're not even, they're not allowed to wear patches in Australia. They're not allowed to, they're not allowed to uh, congregate in more than three, I think, or two, something like that. They've got pretty harsh bikey laws here in Australia. 
Uh, should be the first order of business for any corruption commission to look into that and probe into what might be leaked, he told to the Today Show on Friday. Mr. Martin stepped down after a 25-year run with the rebel biker gang after his brother Shane Martin was deported to New Zealand as a government crackdown. He's also the uncle of the AFL star Dustin Martin. Corruption of the highest order is usually pretty prominent in the Greens, I'd say. They don't do anything without uh, getting a little underhand table deal from someone. This is just another fucking, another normal Greens member. She sits there and screams that there's corruption in government whilst being corrupt. I mean, I pretty much I don't think you can be in government without being corrupt. You might be able to. I think Malcolm Roberts does a pretty good job. Um, Pauline Hanson, you know, things to be said there, but... Lydia Thorpe, corrupt as all hell. Who would have seen that coming? Now, she's obviously been in a relationship with this dude. I don't know whether it worked out or not. I don't really care. I'm just glad to be seeing her getting out of uh, government. And I'm hoping she's going to be losing all of her entitlements because I don't want her to be able to sit at home retiring, earning $220,000 a year, uh, doing nothing. Because that's what she's on now. She's on, two hundred. I think it was $212,000 uh, a year base salary. And um, that's coming from us. That's coming from the Australian public. We're paying her wages and she goes and does shit like this. I'm not surprised at all. Just shows you what kind of character she is, what kind of people she's hanging around with, uh, what kind of people she's opening her legs to. But, you know... Caught red-handed, I, I suppose you could say. She is just the tipping point. Hopefully, they, hopefully they do start up a corruption commission into this, and they go through and thin out the ranks of the Greens Party, and maybe dig up some of the uh, Labor and Liberal corruption that's going on. But you know, you probably won't see anything of it. It'll be interesting to see her financial records if they go into that. Um, where she's been sending her money and where she's been um, spending it, our money, I should say, uh, what she's been up to. Because if she's sleeping with a bikey whilst actively getting information from police about their uh, ongoing investigations into dr uh, drugs or whatever they're doing, uh, whatever they're after the bikey's for at this present time, She's been passing on information, obviously. I guarantee you wouldn't, like, oh, honey, we had a meeting at work today. It was all about rebel bikies, but I can't tell you. I can't tell you a thing about it because that would that would just cross a line. She obviously doesn't really care. She hates Australia anyway. So why should she, um, why should she keep her mouth shut? Why wouldn't she go and blab and tell him exactly what uh, was said in those meetings? Of course she did. I don't know whether she could possibly go to prison for something like this. It'd be interesting to see, but um, she very well could have charges filed against her. I'd, I doubt it because I think uh, the politicians, even the Greens and people like Lydia Thorpe, as, as dumb as she is and um, as stupid as her views are, I don't think they'd um, turn on one another that that badly because if you uh, open it up for one of them, you open it up for more of them. So we'll see. Hopefully this is the last we hear of her besides uh, going to court and um, having to talk to the police about the um, corruption. And maybe, maybe she might see some charges, but I doubt it. So uh, let me know what you think. I reckon that's uh, some good news for the day to start us off anyway. Well, we might as well keep rolling with the good news. Ethan Klein banned from YouTube for at least a week after his uh, Ben Shapiro comment the other day. Uh, if you missed it, Ethan Klein on his H3H3 H3 podcast said uh, something along the lines of um, if there was another Holocaust, he hopes that Ben Shapiro gets gassed first. As you can tell, that's obviously something uh, pretty messed up to say. You make Holocaust jokes all you want. Uh, he's also recently made a direct threat against the NRA. Uh, I think it was an annual meeting or a convention they had. And he wished someone would go and blow it up. And he then stated that they should 
go and do that. So uh, he's gotten off pretty lightly. He says a lot of stupid things. Uh, he's had a crack at Joe Rogan. He's had a crack at Andrew Tate both times. He's been promptly put back in his place and shut down and shut up. But um, he keeps coming out with these bloody zingers. Uh, now, Ethan Klein wished death on a conservative Jewish pundit, Ben Shapiro, during a controversial live stream where he insisted that the Daily Wire reporter would be gassed in the next Holocaust. Following backlash from the video, was taken down from YouTube and Ethan Klein received a strike and was banned for one week. Hassan Piker, Ethan Klein's friend and fellow podcast host, confirmed that Ethan received a strike and that one week ban from YouTube for his anti-Semitic remarks about Ben Shapiro. Now, if this was someone on the right, someone even in the middle, not as far left and as psychotic as someone like Ethan Klein or Hassan Piker or the Young Turks, they would have been removed completely and immediately. They would have been taken off Twitter. They would have been taken off Facebook. They would have been taken off YouTube. Everything. Straight away. I don't think uh, Andrew Tate or someone like that has even said anything as bad as that on the internet. I could be wrong. I don't watch a lot of his stuff. But Ethan Klein says some dumb shit quite often. Uh, during conten continuous broad uh, broadcast, Ethan Klein stated that he hoped Ben Shapiro, a Jewish conservative political journalist, will be the first to be gassed, uh, gassed in the next Holocaust. Some thought... Ethan Klein's remark was a death threat veiled as a joke aimed at Shapiro. Klein responded by calling Shapiro, uh, Shapiro a snowflake and accused him of sending a white supremacist supporters to mass report his channel. No, I, I hope your channel is getting mass reported because you deserve it. You go out and tell people to go up and blow up NRA meetings and conventions and then you um, tell a Jewish man that you hope he gets gassed and that you, I'm guessing what you want another Holocaust or something. Is that what you were going for? <sighs> a, a few white supremacists successfully lobbied YouTube to suspend me, a Jewish Jew citizen of Israel and USA for anti-Semitism. Ben Shapiro and friends can virtue signal all they want, but ultimately they are the ones platforming dangerous anti-Semites. All I did was pointed out. Ethan Klein tweeted. Now, um, that's fucking hilarious because I don't know if you, if you know who Ben Shapiro is. You obviously know he's not a white supremacist um, and he wouldn't have white supremacist supporters. I think anyone on the far right would hate Ben Shapiro. He's a Jewish man for God's sakes. And he's not just like a Jew. He's like a really practicing Jew. Like he has some pretty out there views on some topics like uh homosexuality uh having sex before marriage shit like that abortion obviously um so i don't think any white supremacists would <laughs> like ben shapiro at all but um you know he's just used he's using the language what they do uh saying that he's um was where is it uh lobbied youtube to spare me a jewish jewish sort of anti-semitism I, you know how many times I've heard Ethan Klein say the N-word on a podcast? Like, how does he get away with it? He continued, our client uh, current lawsuits with Ryan Kavanaugh seeks to accomplish the same. I will not back down or be silenced by bad faith provocateurs. I make no apology. As Ben Shapiro says, facts don't care about your feelings. If only he meant it. Well, Ben does mean a lot of the shit he says, if not just about everything, because he's Obviously an intelligent, well thought out person. But um, it's interesting to see that he's calling them bad faith pr provocateurs. Now, um, and he's saying that he's trying to be silenced. He, they're trying to silence him. No, he is the one of the people that go and silence people. He turned his entire platform against people like uh, Ben Shapiro now, obviously, Joe Rogan in the past, because he uh, said that he took ivermectin and didn't get the vaccine, he was trying to get Joe Rogan shut down and taken off Spotify. So it's, I hope that he gets deplatformed and he gets his karma that's coming to him because they keep getting away with all this anti-Semitic crap. They keep getting away with race baiting. They keep getting away with stirring the pot and just for making money like they, they might not even care about the whole situation they're pretending to they just do it for clicks for likes for shares and for 
five minutes of fame. They're whoring themselves out to the internet and they will do and say anything to make a dollar. I respect the hustle. Like, they're American, so, you know, capitalism first, but then they go and say, oh, we hate capitalism, we're all socialists. Bullshit. You love capitalism. Now, I, a week isn't really long enough for this, as you can imagine, um, saying that you want someone to be killed in a holocaust is pretty fucked up. Ben Shapiro responded to the evidence that despite being a dual citizen of Israel, Klein holds anti-Semitic views. Soft peddling genocidal terror group Hamas and lying about the IDF while chortling over which Jews go first in the next Holocaust is also an interesting look. My thoughts on the Palestine Union. I mean, look at the fact. Wanker. Like, he he goes on this saying that Joe Rogan was, what was it? He eats um, nothing but uh, testosterone. <laughs> and um deer meat or something like that and he's sitting there existing the way he does now uh obviously he has no idea what he's talking about but another one of his uh left-wing friends hassan neoliberal and socialist twitch streamer hassan piker downplayed ethan klein's comment by calling them a little spicy oh yeah but if um someone else like if ben shapiro said something like that uh, Joe Rogan, Jordan Peterson, you guys would be jumping up and down about it and saying that they need to be deplatformed. But when you do it, it's fine. If you say something that's really bad, is racist, you, he says the N-word constantly on a few of his videos and you guys all stay up and pat each other on the back and say, oh, it's okay, it was just a little spicy. Of course, he got a strike for it because conservatives love outrage. Conservatives don't run any platform until Elon buys Twitter shortly, which is going to be fun. Of course, he's got a strike for it because conservatives love outrage, Piker said in response to Ethan Klein's YouTube ban during his live stream. He accused Shapiro and his friends of weaponizing the comment and campaigning to get him banned. He should be. I mean, like, if all the rules apply to everyone, he should be banned too. Because someone like Tate gets banned, someone like Alex Jones gets banned, Rogan, uh, Jordan Peterson, Tim Cast, you know, they get taken down for saying, they're going to be careful with what they say. They can't even talk about certain things. I can't do it, obviously. But having a bigger platform, if they say the slightest thing wrong, bang, gone immediately. Ethan Klein will be able to return back to uh, be able to turn to both H3, H3 and Leftovers podcast before the end of the month. Unfortunately. Now, it's f it's friggin' hilarious how um, they bitch and whinge when it happens to them. Andy No here on Twitter. YouTube star Ethan Klein uses about another Holocaust again against the Jews and he says he hopes Ben Shapiro is killed first. I'm not going to play it because I have absolutely zero idea whether I'll be um, taken down or not. And I'm, I'm sure I probably will. Um, but you can see that his uh, producer or whoever's running it uh, immediately realized that that's a no-no and he shouldn't say that. So he cuts the stream and um, then he continues on with his train of thought. There, there you go. He cuts it. Wait a minute. And, and then he continues on with his train of thought. And finish just saying what he was going to say. Like, he's doing it on purpose almost. But a weak ban, I don't think, um, he, you know, you should be able to say what you want to say on the internet because that's what we all like doing. In the, um, but it's got to be equal. You know, if you're going to ban someone on the left for saying something, you, you need to ban someone on the right for saying something. I don't think anyone should be banned for saying pretty much anything you want long as you're not calling out direct threats on people. So basically in line with the American, you know, constitution and freedom of speech and shit like that. There's definitely a case of him calling a direct threat on people in the NRA, saying that someone should go and bomb that building. And he got nothing for it. He's still on YouTube. He's still on Twitter. He's still on every platform. He won't be taken down because he has bent over backwards to adhere to the left and their woke agenda. But it's it's slowly biting him because they consume themselves. They The left consume themselves at a rate that is astonishing. 
and it's entertaining and I take a lot of bloody, I get a lot of happiness out of seeing it happen to people like him. There's someone on uh, uh, TikTok called Tizzy Ant or something like that. He is a lot like this guy. He pretends to be, you know, a big promoter of uh, rights for black people, gay people, you know, uh, anyone who's a minority. But then he goes and doxes people who might have inconvenienced him, might have um, bit of a ca been a bit of a Karen. Some people are just genuine assholes or, um, you know, it should probably have charges put against them and shit like that in his videos. But then he goes and sicks all of his followers on some no-name person, which could honestly lead for that person to committing suicide or harming themselves or harming others or, you know, like you sick a couple of million people or a couple of thousand followers on someone, they're going to have a rough time of it. And this dude does the same thing. So does Hassan. So does that Tizzy uh, nonce, whatever he is. The whole left community does the same thing. And when it happens to them, when they get, you know, bitten by the hand that's feeding them, they throw their arms up in the air and scream like little children. So I'm glad this has happened to him. Because it's good to see the right getting a win for once. It's only a week. I'm sure he'll recover. Maybe he needs to watch his mouth and not um, not push for a holocaust on the Jewish people and threaten right-wing conservative people with blowing them up. It's probably a good idea. If there's any doubt in anyone's mind, let it be gone now about China's intentions here in Australia. China's mysterious police presence in Sydney. Mystery surrounds China's police presence in Australia after a report claimed overseas stations were being used for sinister purposes. Mystery surrounds an official contact point in Sydney established by Chinese cops about four years ago after a new whistleblower report claimed Chinese police service stations in countries around the world were being used for sinister purposes. It has been revealed this week that a web of police service stations have been set up around the world by the People's Republic of China to help the Chinese nationals renew their government-issued identifications and driver's license. But according to Safeguard Defenders, of, uh, Safeguard Defenders, a human right group that documents Chinese repression around the world, the stations have been used to spy on Chinese people. Openly labelled overseas police service stations, they contribute to resolutely cracking down on all kinds of illegal and criminal activities involving Chinese, the group said in a September report. The report accuses stations overseas of involvement in forcibly returning more than 200,000 overseas nationals to China. This method is called persuasion to return and collateral punishment. It is a key tactic to relatives back in China a risk punishment if they don't convince the person to return. Authorities track down the wanted person's family and use intimidation, harassment, detention and imprisonment to pressure them into returning voluntarily, according to the report. That is terrifying. If the Chinese have their own intelligence agencies and police stations, as they like to call them here in Australia, uh, apparently there's already one confirmed in Sydney. So they can control their people. No wonder when you see a protest... Um, the, oh, it was last year sometime, maybe even earlier this year, there was a kid going around holding up a, a sign saying, fuck G Xi Jinping uh, in, I'm guessing, Chinatown in Sydney. And he was like assaulted by these people that were like saying that, he, uh, you know, the most fucked up things about the kid. Uh, they tried to beat him up and take Rippy's sign from him and basically couldn't be seen to be saying anything against the uh, Chinese regime. While there is no complete list of service stations, also called 110 overseas stations, named after China's emergency number 110, as June, as of June, there was at least 54 across five continents and safeguard defenders expect the actual number to be even higher. The report did not list a station in Australia. However, the ABC reporter Bang Zhao revealed on Thursday an official contact point has been established in Sydney by the Department of Public Safety uh, Public Security in the Chinese city of Wenzhou in 2018. 
Safeguard Defenders campaign director Laura Hart said that every country is using different names for the presence of Chinese police for Australian people, I would say, especially overseas Chinese people that have fled China, dissidents, ethnic groups, religious minorities. Obviously, these organisations can be used potentially to go after them or go after their family, she told ABC. News.com.au contacted Safeguard Defenders, the Chinese Embassy in Australia and the Chinese Consulate General for further comment. The Australian Federal Police would not say whether it was aware of China's police contact point in Sydney or the activities it carried out. The Australian Federal Police had no comment when the news.com.au asked if it was aware that the Sydney contact point or the activities it carried out. I do not see what is wrong. Following the release of Safeguard Defenders report, an anonymous official from the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Shanghai confirmed overseas policing operations were being used to convince alleged criminals to return to China, according to Spanish newspaper El Correo. Bilateral treaties are the very, cumbrance, uh, are very cumbersome in Europe and is reluctant to extradite to China. I do not see what is wrong in persuading, uh, pressuring criminals to face justice with all the guarantees contained in Chinese law. The official says, according to a Chinese, uh, to an English translation, in Dublin, Ireland, the signage of a Chinese police st station was removed from the front of its building last week. The Irish Times reported the New York Post discovered a Chinese police service station in Manhattan was run by a U.S. charity that is on international uh, internal revenue service blacklist. The news of the station had been greeted with outrage from Republican politicians who sent a letter to the U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland and the Secretary of State Anthony Blinken demanding an explanation. There we go. They are running their communist police, or I wouldn't even call them police, they'd be spies in Australia. And not just Australia, all around the world. And they're using that to pressure people who speak out against China, who speak out against the CCP, to return home to face punishment if they do something that China doesn't uh, doesn't want or doesn't like. That's the, if, if this is the case here in Australia, if they find any of these people doing that, they need to be deported immediately or imprisoned. You cannot work for a foreign government in our fucking country spying on our country's people. Surely someone should have figured this out by now. Maybe our army or intelligence might have seen this coming. How have they not known about it? This is insane. Just goes to show you the lengths that China is going to to subverse any country <laughs> that it can get its hands into, get its fucking finger in the pie, as one would say. It's... Amazing. You, you see the issue with Huawei when we found out that how uh, there was all backdoor programs into getting through the uh, hardware there and opening up all sorts of fucking information. So anything with a Huawei, uh, Huawei device could theoretically be back channeled and all the information could be sent to the CCP. So whether it's a private business, whether it's a uh, government if you were using a Huawei device, it could be corrupted so all your information was stolen and sent back to the CCP. Now, maybe that's got something to do with all these uh, Chinese hackers that have been uh, popping up around here. Where I think we just had that um, guy with the Optus breach. Also, Medibank has been hacked and had a whole bunch of uh, credit card information leaked. It could possibly be China or a Chinese hacker. And with them running police stations in our country and other countries around the world, so their presence is local and persistent, what else are they up to that we don't know about? The government of China, the CCP, is not friendly towards Australia. I don't see why we're sending them money, doing all this business with them that we shouldn't be doing. Uh, anytime they get angry at us, our government just bends over backwards to make them happy. It's disgusting. And they obviously don't have our best interests at heart. They're a communist country, for fuck's sakes. Like, we've got to stop sending them everything. We buy shit off of them. We send our money there. We send our resources there. Our gas is sold to them. And nothing is left here in Australia. 
We've got to cut ties with China. For God's sakes, they're harvesting human organs from the Uyghur Muslims that they've locked in concentration camps. And we do business with them and our government kisses their ass. It's fucking disgusting. So if the world hasn't got any weirder this year, let's get into Kanye West has come out and called Joe Biden fucking retarded in a meeting with uh, Pierce Morgan for not meeting with Elon Musk. So let's go and have a look at this story here. Kanye says he does not regret his anti-Semitic tirade. Brands Biden fucking retarded for not meeting Elon Musk and excuses his foul language because he has mental health issues before storming out of an explosive interview. Uh, we'll take a look at the clip here, shall we? Our placed in power and 99% of the world are the audience. So that 1% of the world, this idea of a United Nations, this is the world that needs to come together. This is the world that, I mean, here's the obvious go-to. Biden doesn't listen to Elon Musk. The president of the United States does not have meetings with Elon Musk. Hmm. That is <laughs> Hey, here, come, 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 come get me. That's <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to say that, Biden, but that's <laughs> Biden. And, and I, you know, it's, um, and obviously because I've been deemed with mental health, all this, I have the right to use whatever words that I like to use. There's that's fantastic. Well, he's not wrong, is he? <laughs> oh, that's great. I love it. Someone's out there fucking throwing a wrench in the works it's fantastic we'll, we'll get into the story here uh kanye west has branded president joe biden fucking retarded for not meeting with the world's richest man elon musk in a foul mouth rant the rapper who was being interviewed by pierce morgan apologized for his bad language but ex excused it by saying that he has mental health issues also in the interview west addressed the jewish community after his anti-semitic uh, twitter tirade and doubled down on some of his antics Despite offering up a half-hearted apology, West, now known as Yee, said that he does not, uh, he absolutely does not regret his comments, which resulted in a huge backlash with some of his social media accounts being suspended and sponsorships canned. The apology came two hours after the interview. West mocked Morgan by calling him a Karen, which is true, while offering him advice on how to become as rich as he is. That's fucking great. He's also stormed out of his interview midway through the sunset. Oh my God. You know, 1% of the world are placed in power with 99% of the world are the audience, West said. So that 1% of the world, this idea of United Nations, this is the world that needs to come together. Here's the obvious go-to. Biden doesn't listen to Elon Musk. The president of the United States does not listen to Elon Musk, he said. That is fucking, West said before gesturing to the camera here, come and get me. In an apparent challenge by saying, that's fucking retarded. The screen cut to interviewer Morgan, who looked confounded by West's comments and appeared to be holding back from responding. I know that I'm not supposed to say that Biden's fucking retarded, Biden. West continued, but obviously I've been deemed with mental health all this time, so I have the right to use whatever words I like to use. He's using their uh, own language against them now. That's great. The clip did not show West elaborating on why he thought Biden should be meeting with Musk in April. Senior officials with the Biden administration held a meeting with Tesla CEO and major leaders of American car industry. At this point in the interview that will, that will air fully on Friday, Morgan challenged West over his anti semitic comments on Twitter. I will say I am sorry for the people that are hurt with the death con comments. He said on his show, but the British talk show host. I feel I caused hurt and confusion. I'm sorry for the families of the people that had nothing to do with the trauma that I had been through and that I use my platform where you say hurt people, hurt people. I was hurt. So it's going to be an interesting saga to see what Kanye is up to now, uh, going to get up to next. But um, 2024, that, you know, it's, it's coming. It's going to be... West wore a 2024 hat during Pierce Morgan view, a sign that he may still be considering a 2024 presidential run. That would be fucking astounding. Um, it could be 2024 for Trump. Who knows? Who, who knows? Uh, Kanye's a uh, little, he's gone a little bit off the deep end, but it's entertaining. He's not a stupid person. He's, I don't think you get to become a, you know, a billionaire, uh, an artist and a, um, 
I don't know what you'd call a mogul, uh, shoe mogul <laughs> with his uh, brand Yeezys, but a clothing line um, billionaire. You don't get to become that by being stupid or um, mentally handicapped. He is obviously a some sort of savant, I would say. But um, it's interesting to see what's going on here. The media is thoroughly enjoying their attack on him. Uh, it's bouncing off pretty well, as far as I can tell so far. He's been uh, he's been deplatformed, um, but you know you don't really need a platform when TMZ is following you around, asking you questions, and you can just blurt out whatever comes to mind to TMZ, and it's going to be guaranteed to make front page of uh, any newspaper or any article. The rapper and clothing designer said on Pierce Morgan Uncensored that he was only referencing certain Jewish people who he believes have screwed him over. Well, I mean, there you go. So, less than two weeks ago, the rapper wrote in a tweet, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. Yeah, it was a bit of a fucking, um, bit of an odd tweet to put out at two o'clock in the morning, whatever it was. Uh, but, you know... Freedom of speech. <laughs> he may have upset a few Jewish people, but uh, it's nothing that, like, uh, that past uh, story we just did, uh, Ethan Klein hasn't said about uh, Jewish people. Uh, I'd, I'd put it to you that it's a lot better because he actually didn't say anything negative about him, did he? Um, Ethan Klein sitting there saying that they should be gassed. But, you know, DEFCON, also known as a defense readiness condition, is an alert used by the U.S., armed forces to indicate how quickly the military can be deployed during a deadly emergency and attacks. Yi was pressed by Morgan on whether his anti-Semitic remarks were racist, and he says they were, although at one point the rapper says it's not racism when asked about his comments. See, what's going on, like, you can't, the left says you can't be racist if you're black. Uh, he's black, but he's apparently racist now. And since when does the left jump up and down about, um, people being racist against Jews. They generally hate them. When you insult the Jewish people, say you're going on DEFCON 3 on the Jewish people, that is racist as anything. You say you've been through, Morgan said, racism is racism. And you know that, I think, don't you? At the time of his initial tweets, West claimed that he couldn't be anti-Semitic because all black people are also Jewish. So that's the uh, black, uh, black Israelites um, doctrine coming through there. That's a fun conversation. Um, the black Israelites, geez. Uh, the funny thing is I can't actually be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who opposes your agenda, Kanye wrote last week. It's 100% right. They keep saying like, they're calling him racist now, but... Five minutes ago, they're saying, oh, black people can't be racist. Uh, or maybe it's just can't be racist against white people. But the majority of Jews, I'd say, are white or white passing. I suppose they're ethnic. I don't know. They live in, the, uh, you know, Israel's in the Middle East. So pick a color, any color. I don't really care. Everyone's pretty much the same. But I, Americans, again, in their, um, their fucking love for seeing color in people. I just don't get it. It's... It's not really the same here in Australia. I don't, I don't know why they're so um, preoccupied with people's race and heritage over there. It's pretty fucking weird. Like you go, uh, you talk to an American, and they're like, oh, "I'm one twelfth Irish," and you know, whatever. It, it's like so <laughs> fucking. Who cares? You know, <laughs> like they they love it over there. I don't know why. Uh, the rapper's Twitter account was later suspended. In a statement, Twitter confirmed West that it was locked out of his account. In the interview, he, Yee clarified that he wanted to apologize to the Jews who did nothing wrong. West's comments were also specifically geared towards Jewish Hollywood executives for the treatment of black entertainers. Well, that I get. Like, it's not so much a Jewish Hollywood, but it's just Hollywood executives, I'd say, like, like Harvey Weinstein. Um, you know, those kind of people. He might be talking about them. Uh, Ye had also previously leaned in on stereotypes about Jewish people owning the banks, calling out J.P. Morgan leaders, which and then he was actually uh, let go by J.P. Morgan. It has been less than three days since he has returned on social media app after being banned by previous ownership. Twitter's new owner, Elon Musk, has reviewed his initial suspension and then welcomed him back with open arms. 
Freedom of speech wins again. Elon's finally got fucking Twitter and he's bringing people back for the ensuing civil war that America is fucking hurling towards right right down like a fucking bowling ball. They are running full clip towards civil war. And I think Twitter's takeover by Elon Musk uh, is going to hopefully put a bit of a fucking dampener on those flames. Uh, welcome back to Twitter, my friend. Musk tweets, uh, tweeted on October 8th. West current Twitter page shows a spot where the tweet used to be, stating that the message violated Twitter rules. Before he was once again kicked off and was able to tweet twice about cancel culture and current pro uh, protests are underway in Iran. So, uh, not a big fan of um, West. Oh, yeah, I suppose you call him now. I'm not, I'm not calling him that. It's, that's fucking retarded. Um, I suppose I'm not a big fan of his music, obviously. Um, but he is an entertaining character. It is fun to see him um, on the internet at the moment. He, I, being a billionaire the way like he is. Being obviously a smart entrepreneur uh, with a bit of a freaking axe to grind against a few people in Hollywood by the looks of it. Um, he takes things very personally. I mean, we saw all that with uh, Pete Davis and Kim Kardashian arguing. But, you know, that's just fucking marital spats between celebrities, which is not really my cup of tea. But um, it's interesting to see... I think he knows a lot more about what's going on behind the scenes. So being a billionaire, being um, a famous artist and things like that, you get a lot, you get a good look behind the curtain. So whatever he was tweeting about with uh, the uh, DEFCON Jews thing, m maybe something more to it, uh, whatever he's talking about that doesn't really come out clearly. He needs a bit of, um, Maybe he needs a Xanax or something so he can calm down and uh, get his tweets out clearly so it makes a bit more sense. But it's an interesting character to keep an eye on. During his Wednesday interview with Morgan, the rapper accused the British television host of being a Karen and, did not hold, and not holding accountability to his pain. Pierce Morgan is something else though, isn't he? Like, if you go and watch the Andrew Tate interview, Tate just schooled him on everything. He was calling to, oh, would you uh, take... Things like, oh, would you be friends with Hitler if he was nice to you? Like, just fucking out of the ballpark questions that make no sense that no matter which way you're going to answer them, make you look bad. It's just a wanker. Like, fucking, I don't know anyone who likes Pierce Morgan. I really enjoy, like, I'm sure he's got some of his, you know, some of his views are in the right place and some of his thoughts are, but he's just... He, uh, he just fucking irks me and irks most people, I suppose. Like, he's a rich, fat, pommy boy that just thinks that he's better than everyone else. Like, I'm surprised someone hasn't just leapt across the table and beaten him. Like, Andrew Tate, would have, that would have been fucking gold. But, you know, violence is never the answer to anything. Uh. The interviewer said he did not, uh, he did acknowledge his troubles, but I think that you're not understanding the pain that you've been causing with some of these comments. He also says that Morgan is trying to pull him back into the 1960s and a week ago rather than being in the present and dealing with the, re uh, dealing with the now. As Morgan attempts to give you advice on how we can grow to progress this moment, the rapper abruptly changes the topic by asking, how much money are you worth? After the TV, TV host, uh, host response, not as much as you, sadly, Kanye says, why would I listen to you? <laughs> In a Monday evening interview, the News news uh, news Nation, Chris Cuomo West launched into an an another anti-Semitic rant saying that a Jewish underground media mafia, it's ruining his career. West complained a mafia of Jewish media executive attacked his White Lives Matter stunt with the Paris Fashion Week that are always calling him a rapper instead of a billionaire. Well, he's fucking not wrong. He did get dragged through, dragged through the fucking coals over that White Lives Matter stunt. Um, as we can all expect, because you can't say those kind of things, because that would be racist, wouldn't it? But uh, what's going on? Like he, He's African-American. 
he's black, he's uh, he can't be racist. I didn't think black people could be racist. I really honestly don't think Kanye is racist. I don't, I don't think Kanye really gives a shit. He's got a lot of other shit on his mind, but he just calls out bullshit when he sees it. I don't think he's right a lot of the time. He says some silly things. He's a bit autistic, I suppose. Um, mental health issues, as he says, but uh, he's not wrong on a lot of the shit he says. They cancelled my store so far. Stadium shows he claimed. Uh, right, they have been. They have the press saying on 78 outlets that when I was arguing with Pete Davison and Trevor Noah, they called me an abuser for arguing with people about my ex-wife and my family when I get to see my kids and when I don't and immediately disrespect me. They keep the crazy this crazy narrative going. They call me a billionaire. Uh, they never call me a billionaire, he continued. We never talk about even one right here. Hey, tycoon, billionaire, visionary, inventor. These are never used. No, they pretty much don't. They just call him a rapper because... Like, I suppose that's what he started off as. Uh, call him a billionaire rapper, I suppose. It is a bit derogatory the way they talk about him. I mean, even in this story here, the Daily Mail. Daily Mail's obviously biased as all hell, but, you know, uh, it's whatever they say about him, It's they try to put him down, on, uh, to take him down a peg so people don't look up to him. In that interview, Yi claimed that the Jewish people that I'm talking about have a certain privilege and that he is now calling out the Jewish community as a whole. Cuomo tried to assure the rapper there is no secret group of wealthy Jews colluding in his to harm his career, saying it is either a figment of your imagination or a projection of your prejudice. Yeah, I don't think it's a, a um, bunch of Jewish people doing it. I think it's a leftist um, propaganda machine doing it. But, um... Yeah, that's it for Kanye West for now. We'll see what happens. I'm sure he'll probably do something silly tomorrow. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it. But uh, what do you guys think, eh? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.